Hello and welcome to What's New with CDP Public Cloud. Um, my name is Hannah Jetty and I'm your host today. And I'll be talking to you about Cloudera Data Warehouse. We're talking about Hive and Impala get a facelift, as well as how you can run advanced analytics at scale. So today we have um, three presenters joining us. We've got Justin Hayes, who is Senior Director of Product Management, David Dickman, Director of Product Management, and Joy Deep, VP of Product Management um, here at Cloudera, all working on the Cloudera Data Warehouse products. So welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Um, you. Where are you joining us from? David, let's start with you. Sure. Well, I'm just outside of Boston here, although my background uh, kind of denies that a little bit. But uh, it's a nice, sunny, a little bit cold, starting to look like fall here. Excellent. Well, we all wish we could be on some nice European cobblestone street over there right now. Um, Justin, how about you? Hi, uh, everyone. I'm uh, currently in the in a makeshift desk in the corner of my bedroom. Thank you very much, COVID. But um, broadcasting out of Menlo Park, California, and it's always nice and sunny and warm here. So, sorry, David. Um, I think we got oh, to be. That's where I'm broadcasting from, but out of New York, in the corner of my bedroom. <laughs> We're all working. Um, Joy Deep, what about you? Where are you joining us from? Yeah, I'm actually out of my uh, office, home office, uh, out here in Latrop uh, Central Valley in California. So it's not just warm and sunny, but it's really hot out here. I'm starting to cool down here in New York. Cool. So um, let's dive in. So today we've got a raffle for those of you joining us live. Um, if you, while we're chatting, drop us a question in the comment section below. And you'll be entered to win our raffle. We've got some fun Clatera swag that you could win. Um, you'll get Clatera credit that you can use to buy something fun like a beanie or socks to get ready for winter or maybe a notebook, whatever um, your heart desires. So just ask a question and you will be entered as we get chatting with our presenters. So let's start with Justin. Thanks. So Justin, tell me about Cloudera Data Warehouse and what are some of the new capabilities that have come out in the last few months? Sure, thanks. So um, I'll do a quick level set of, of the Cloudera Data Warehousing service, otherwise known as CDW, and then recap on some recent features that we put out. So first off, the, the purpose of CDW is to make it easier for more people to benefit from data. And the way we do that is by exposing a self-service analytics capability to any type of user that needs to run any type of BI workload, whether it's dashboarding or report building, um, ad hoc exploration, feature, feature engineering, model training. Um, the, the data warehouse platforms for any of those uh, types of workloads, again, all via self-service. But the moment that you have more and more users doing more and more things, you have to make sure that they're not stepping on each other's toes. So we've built a lot of isolation into the platform itself to ensure that a user running a really heavyweight data processing job isn't going to interfere with the user that's building an ad hoc report for the CFO's office that needs to get done really quickly. Right. So everyone's SLAs can be met with this isolation model we've created, even with really, really high levels of concurrency. But also to do this, you need enough compute capacity. Um, but it's not just about having enough compute capacity. It's having the right amount, exactly the right amount at the right time so that you can get the queries run on time, but then re releasing those resources so your costs remain low. You're only paying for really what you need. So we built um, intelligent auto scaling into the compute layer such that we can make sure that you have what you need when you need it, but you don't want to pay for it when you don't need it. And then finally, um, the more and more uh, of a self-service capability we provide to a whole army of end-user analysts, uh, more and more tend to want to use it. So you have to get those new users, new projects, new tenants, new lines of business onboarded really quickly. Gone are the days of, of months or, or, or even you know weeks or even days of, of lead time to, to get capacity for a new project or a new user. That's now on the order of minutes, um, whether it's two nodes or 200 nodes. Um, we, we have that really uh, quickly available with all the security and governance controls applied automatically. So it's it's a safe way to provide agility to the business. So um, that's the purpose of CDW. Some of the recent features we've put out that um, help further those goals. I'll start at the top here with security. That's a very apropos thing to start with. It's always front and center and I'll go clockwise. So with all these users connecting through their BI tools, it's, it can be a, a security risk to have lots and lots of usernames and passwords floating around out there. InfoSec hates that sort of thing. So we've made it such that anybody connecting over a JDBC or ODBC 
can uh, do so in a, in a single sign-on manner. So right now, all of the CDP platform is single sign-on enabled. And, and, and now for your tools that are using the data rousing service, if you've not yet authenticated at the start of the day, maybe you load a dashboard, it will send you straight through to your corporate identity provider, whether it's Okta or Active Directory or whatever, and you'll log on as you normally would, including multi-factor authentication if, if that's a requirement. And then you're kicked back to your tool to continue with your work. So this is, is something that makes it easy for users to initially get access to the, to the warehouse to do their work and also makes InfoSec happy. Another aspect of security that we've recently improved is it, it helps with the situation where you have a, a data lake where there's lots and lots of files within it and users want to get access to those files for analytics reasons. Uh, most data lakes are backed by cloud object storage, um, but unfortunately, most object storage tools are very coarse grained in their access controls. So you, you either have access to this entire bucket or not as a user. Um, but, but the reality is each, each bucket would have many, many levels of subdirectories and files buried within it. And we've added the ability to get very fine grained um, from the access control perspective so that you can really just give permission only to those subdirectories or files that a specific user should have access to. So again, we're making InfoSec happy while making it easy for the users to tap into all this data available in the data lake for their analytics purposes. We've also added um, more capabilities around visibility and, and manageability so that it's easy to diagnose and, and tune and troubleshoot your workloads. We've opened up web consoles that give you um, access to your query metrics and query profiles. We've made it easy to zip up all the log files that are running on all the different pods behind the scenes and, and make that easy to download so you can look through those or, or hand those off to our support team if you're working on a support case together. On the usability front, we've recently expanded the um, capabilities of Hive Query Federation. So we've added Redshift as a target database that we can federate to. And also we, we integrate with AWS Secrets Manager to more easily and more securely secure your credentials uh, with, if you're running in AWS anyway. And another long standing ask that we've had um, has been around migrations of workloads from legacy data rousing systems. So many of those support stored procedures and that's a common thing to do in, in data rousing. So now Hive has um, the ability to, to execute stored procedures as a fully supported tool and that really helps ease the migration process for these sorts of projects. And then finally, on the cost side, I, I mentioned earlier that we have auto scale built in. So the compute executors will scale out and scale back in as and when new workloads arrive to make sure we always have enough capacity. We've taken that model and extended it to other services that are running behind the scenes within the CDW environment such that we can now automatically shut down more things that don't need to be running at any given time and automatically start them back up when they do need to be running. So it's, it's a way to help reduce the overall total cost of ownership for your CDW environment. Got it. Sounds like a lot of powerful stuff and you guys have been busy. Um, and I'm sure customers are excited to see kind of some of that faster time to value and kind of cost reduction coming out of that. So yeah. can you tell me any customer examples of where customers are already using and seeing benefits from these new features? Yeah, sure. So uh, one example is, is a customer that's got a lot of um, data and, and queries running against Redshift. And so mm -hmm. they've, they're, they're benefiting from this um, query federation enhancement so that you know partly they can now join the data that's in CDW with the data in Redshift. Um, it's always good to join data sets together, um, get better insights. It also helps them in that migration process because it's um, they can do a stage-wise migration and at any given time, they can still run queries and, and see data from both places even if they're only 30% completed with the migration. Uh, an example on the cost front is we've had a customer that um, that is able to save over 30% of their um, infrastructure costs just by using this new coordinator auto shutdown feature. So that's a very significant change. And I'll wrap up quickly with um, uh, an outside in view. So that you can see on the left, the, the recent Farser wave, um, Clutter is up there straddling the, the leader category. And this is just validation that um, from Farser that CDW is a, a very mature, comprehensive, easy to use and secure um, cloud data rousing platform and then that's also borne out by recent benchmarks um, that were done by a third party that, that showed Cloudera had the best um, price performance uh, of all the other incumbent cloud data rousing options out there, in some cases by a significant margin. So 
this really validates the the um, the fact that we, we've taken these really powerful open source big data engines in Hive and Impala and made them very much cloud native from a performance and a cost perspective and marry those two together and you got the industry best price performance out there. And with that, I'll hand it back to, to Hannah to um, maybe do some questions and then hand it on to David. Yeah, um, I do have a few questions. So how does CDW provide um, single sign-on for um, BI tool users? Yeah, so, so the way it works is when you go to make that connection for the first time, you don't have to give your, your username and password, but we basically know that we're, we're part of the broader single sign-on infrastructure that, that CDP uses that's itself linked in with your identity provider. So it's all sort of one giant realm of single sign-on. And, and now we're just able to detect when you make that initial connection from your BI tool, have you authenticated or not? And if not, we just pop you right over in a little web browser that pops up um, to, to your, like I said, your Okta or your, your AD, and then you can log on and, and go from there. So it's very uh, familiar and, and sort of seamless and transparent to the end user. Got it, thanks. Um, so a reminder to our live audience, um, if you have any questions for Justin, just ask them below. Um, but for now, let's start chatting with David a little bit, and then we'll come back to anything else. Thanks, Justin, for joining. Sure thing. Um, so, hey, David. I'm gonna give David just a second um, to join us while we're waiting for David. Quick question for you, Justin. Um, what cloud providers are these on? Is Cloud Air Data Warehouse on? Uh, yeah, so it's um, currently we run on AWS and Azure, right? Um, we also run into private cloud as well on OpenShift, um, and we're just putting out a release to run on, on, on Rancher as the Kubernetes provider. So it's um, we're, we're definitely multi-cloud and also hybrid cloud for that matter. Excellent, thanks. So let's see if we can get um, David on now. Hi, there you are. Welcome. Hello. Hi. So, one of the most common data warehouse use cases is around exploratory analytics. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, do you have an example of how someone would use it? Well, absolutely, Hannah. One of my favorite examples is uh, we're working with a major grocery uh, organization, and their big challenge is as a major supermarket chain in North America, they're differentiating on being one of the uh, USDA certified organic grocers. And one of their chief business goals is to maintain environmental friendliness. Now, the challenge is they've got over 44 retail outlets in 10 major cities, and they are dealing with over 100 different types of perishable organic foods. The challenge that they brought to us is they want to make sure that they put the right foods out to be sold. If the foods aren't available, they'll lose business to any one of their five major local competitors. But if they put too much food out, that ends up costing about 45 million a year in financial losses due to inventory spoilage. And that's not very environmentally friendly either. So the big challenge is they wanna know how can they get smarter about inventory management? Well, that's a two-step process. The first step is explore and discover. And this is where we'll focus today. The idea here is you need to go and see what kinds of questions can we ask of our data that will help us be smarter around inventory management. We need to look at some data sets, find new data sets, build out some queries, evaluate, accept and reject hypotheses, and whittle down until we have a handful of really good questions we can ask our data, new data we find or data we already have. And then we need to make that available to folks on a day-to-day -day basis so they can start making inventory decisions on the fly. So today we're gonna focus predominantly on the exploratory analytics. So we all understand that we need to go and find meaningful correlations and insights in our data in order to be able to turn that into something decision makers can use on a daily basis. So we need to find out, do we have all the data we need to answer those questions? And from those answers, can we make inventory decisions that make sure that we have the ability to reduce waste without missing any sales? So today's example, we're going to test a couple of different hypotheses. Well, you can imagine having hundreds like this. We're going to see, well, does changes in population density over time have a direct correlation to sales. And we're going to check and see, does weather condition changes over time have a direct correlation to sales? But what's typically holding us back is we don't know where the data is. And without self-service, it's hard to go find data on our own and decide whether that's an interesting set for us to explore or not. And we want to slice and dice through schema and data, 
And in a lot of cases, if we're dealing with these classic monolithic systems, we're always waiting for resources to be available before we can even start doing some of our exploratory work. And if the data sets aren't already in the environment, waiting for that data to be, to be loaded can add days, weeks to our decision-making, uh, slicing and dicing. We don't wanna be doing that sort of thing. So this is a great example of where self-service exploratory analytics can dramatically streamline the, are we asking the right questions to, yes, these are the right questions, these answers are meaningful. So that's a great example of where exploratory analytics and self-service come into play. Got it. So it sounds like there's some real um, challenges and blockers slowing down adoption for exploratory, exploratory analytics. Um, how do enhancements in CDW help make this faster and easier? Sure. Well, let me show you that in a demonstration. I have uh, pre-recorded this in the interest of time, but let me show you a few things that we can do with the Cloud Era Data Warehouse that will help us um, streamline this process. The first is Cloud Air Data Warehouse is part of the Cloud Air Data Platform. And as a result, we have these things in the data catalog, these data sets that allow us to quickly discover what data we have available. And in the data warehouse, we're able to very quickly procure our own resources. In this case, I'm walking through a quick example of setting up a database catalog that will contain the, the tables and columns, et cetera, that we're going to use to slice and dice. In a lot of cases, those catalogs may already exist. And here I'm gonna start up my own virtual warehouse. These are my resources that I can slice and dice through the schema and data for without affecting any other workloads that are already running in the data warehouse. I'm gonna make a small one because I don't need a whole lot of resources. I'm gonna be using sample data sets and look for correlations. And I'm going to enable data visualization so that when I'm done, I can share graphs and charts using Cloudera data visualization with stakeholders to say, is this data meaningful? Have we found the right answers? Now for the next step, I'm going to go and use Q. Q is our SQL editor, and this is the tool where I'll be looking at the different data sets and exploring our data. So here we see that we are going to be in the environment. Here's Q. And we see that I've already got some of the data sets that we're looking at prepared and loaded and ready to explore. So I'm just using Hue, drag and drop, creates a select star, limit 100, so we can just start playing very quickly with a simple drag and drop. And here we see a data set. We see some sales data over time. It's interesting, we got some eggplant sales. We see them going up and down over time. And this is going to be our core sales data. But we wanna compare this initially, remember the two hypotheses against population data. Another way to find data is to simply do searches inside Hue. I find nothing that matches population. So I need to bring a data set in. I'm going to import data from my local file. I have three years of population data changes in a CSV that I was able to procure from US Census. When I go and import it, Hue is smart enough to discover if there's a header row to name the columns after the header. The default table name we're going to create is named after the CSV. That's not very useful. So we can go ahead and give it a more meaningful table name, something that we'll understand when we're doing our slicing and dicing. And we can do a similar thing with all the column names that were detected from the header make them maybe conform to our standards or be, again, something that's meaningful to us and we'll understand. And we can also check the data types. By default, we determine the data types. We got them right, but you can change them if we didn't. Then we hit uh, submit. It creates the table, imports the data, and prepares it for use. So now if we go back to the editor, we'll see that we now have available the city population table. So let's just take a peek and make sure the data came in on that one as well. Drag and drop with you create that nice little select statement. And we can take a peek at the data that we brought in from that CSV. So I'll select and run the query. And here we see some population data for various cities. Now the real trick is understanding did population density change over time affect sales over time? So we're going to use a correlation query. This is a standard correlation function, produces a correlation coefficient. We're going to take a look at both data sets together, looking at the same cities and the same time frame, and we're going to see are there correlations. Now the correlation coefficient function we're using here, the closer to zero it is, the less correlation there is. The closer to one or negative one, the more we have a positive or negative correlation. What we see here is some very, very small numbers. These are practically zero. So this is telling me city population changes over time are not something that we can use to help improve our inventory management. 
But let's jump ahead a little bit and import that weather data, same way we did before. Similar correlation function focusing on weather data. But now when we run the correlation function, we see the correlation coefficient is much closer to one in a lot of cases. So this is telling me weather changes over time have a direct impact on what's going on with our sales. And if we can incorporate weather data into our dashboards and reports, our managers can do a much better job of getting more precise in how much of each inventory item they should leave out without putting too much out and leading to additional waste. Excellent, well, that's an impressive demo. Um, so how does this discovery actually become something that businesses can use every day? Well, now that we know the data that and by slicing and dicing very quickly with self-service exploratory analytics, we would get into step two. So now that we know weather has a big impact on sales and inventory needs, we're gonna have Cloudera Data Warehouse as part of the Cloudera Data Platform deliver insights at scale. Self-service doesn't just apply just to the exploratory analytics. We have self-service data ingest using Cloudera Dataflow. So here we can build a permanent ingest of weather data from the weather service so it becomes part of our day-to-day -day dashboard up to the hour, up to the minute. We'll use data engineering with self-service data preparation using Cloudera Data Engineering, where the data engineers can then prepare that data and optimize it for our specific use case. And back in the Cloudera Data Warehouse, we'll use self-service business intelligence to, bit, to create that optimized schema so that tens, hundreds, or tens of thousands of people can access those dashboards in near real time without loss. And finally, the line of business analysts will take advantage of Cloudera Data Visualization to create those dashboards and reports that they can call upon to see how much of each inventory item should they put out given the current weather and given the weather forecast. So what we get is out of the box, ready to go self-service exploratory analytics, spend less time waiting and more time getting those answers to which data sets are interesting and should be explored and used in our dashboards to rapid development, to get it out to, fo to folks who can use it every day so they can immediately get impact on their business. And back to the use case with this grocery store, what they got is an immediate discovery that weather correlations really did have an impact on inventory and was worth the time and effort to incorporate in their dashboards. And that time and effort was streamlined by developing quickly that weather-driven inventory dashboard that led them to an immediate reduction in waste that saved them over 40 million a year. Now, I didn't go into that second half in a lot of detail, but if you folks come and visit us at Cloudera now, you'll see a broader and deeper end-to-end -end demo of this whole discovery leads to development, leads to a running dashboard. And we'd love to have you folks come out and see that bigger demo. Great, Dave and I will both be there. So Excellent. thanks. Now let's jump over to Joy Deep. Hey, welcome. So one of the recent enhancements we've talked about with Data Warehouse is Unified Analytics. Can you talk about a little bit about what, um, why you added the capability and what are some of the problems that we're trying to address? I think you might be a little mute, so. Yep, I think I'm off mute now. Excellent. there you are. Sorry about that. But um, yeah, so I think Justin uh, outlined earlier that, um, how CDWs got all of the core capabilities and several enhancements to make it uh, very, very appealing to deploy it quickly, uh, get value out of it. And then David explained uh, how well uh, we have put everything together as tools and, and, and services that allow you to actually get started on real projects, explore, and then put them in production. So while that is extremely important to our customers, we also wanted to make sure that there is a continuous stream of innovation added to uh, data warehousing. And Unified Analytics essentially uh, stands for uh, the core of the type of innovations uh, that we're bringing. So if you look at um, our current CDW, some of the stuff that David and uh, Justin outlined, it's an agile data warehouse uh, where you really don't require too much of management. And there's a lot of uh, exploration that you can do interactively. You saw that in the demo. Uh, and then also there are a lot of line of business specific uh, data marts that you can build uh, for our uh, customers. Uh, while that is already present and uh, the CDW is very capable of doing that, we wanted to make sure that we are able to provide a much more robust enterprise grade data warehouse. And that's where Unified Analytics comes in. 
So for example, if you want to migrate from your legacy data warehouses built out of uh, previous generation technologies and bring them into our platform, our platform should be able to um, mimic some of those capabilities and uh, allow those migrations to happen more seamlessly. Besides that, uh, there are more advanced capabilities that customers often desire, like slicing and dicing um, based on uh, you know, commonly and frequently used uh, queries and then drill downs and drill across, roll up, so on and so forth. So this OLAP capability is something that we wanted to address, and this is where Unified Analytics comes in as well. And finally, when you talk of an enterprise data warehouse, it's end-to-end, -end, and David outlined some of that. But when we say end-to-end, -end, it needs to be at the enterprise level with the right security, with the right uh, uh, authorizations, uh, with the right amount of performance and scale. So that's what Unified Analytics uh, does. And uh, you know, I can go into a little bit more detail in terms of uh, how it makes it happen. Uh, so uh, in terms of you know, how we bring it to life, uh, we have basically two major engines, Hive and Impala. And uh, Unify Analytics essentially sits as a layer inside CDW on top of these two engines and uh, enables this whole suite of capabilities that we outlined, but also a lot of new stuff. So as you can see on the top, there are a lot of client tools like Hue uh, that David outlined. We have visualization uh, that we have out of the box. And then we have third-party BI tools uh, that we also provide uh, as an option. So Unified Analytics sits uh, as an intermediary between all of these tools, as well as our core engines. Uh, Hive is primarily used for ETL uh, jobs and Impala for BI jobs, but it abstracts all of that out as a common layer. Uh, so and it provides the same SQL compatible uh, language API to both of those engines um, without customers having to worry about compatibility between the two engines. So that's the very first um, uh, you know, thing that you see out of this uh, picture. But besides that, we have invested heavily to make it um, much better in terms of price performance. You saw in Justin's presentation that we have the leading price performance, but we are not stopping there. We're continuously innovating, and Unified Analytics allows us to do that, especially for those large EDW complex queries that I was talking about earlier. And then uh, also allows us to get to the uh, latest level of ANSI standards. Uh, so we are fully compatible ANSI 2016 SQL standards for both uh, ETL type of workloads and BI. And we've also made sure that our ability to provide interesting tools, we already provide tools like Workload Manager, SQL Editor, Visualization, but we have also added recommenders. Uh, often our customers find it hard to model uh, these complex analytics and we don't want them to be expert at modeling. So we've come up with a very intelligent uh, OLAP recommender that actually uh, lets them um, you know, get uh, recommendations from the system itself that, hey, you should create this exact type of uh, cube to get your OLAP better. And that enables uh, really uh, state-of-the-art OLAP capabilities. And besides that, there are a whole slew of really advanced optimizations uh, that allow enterprise uh, grade analytics, um, you know, covering anywhere from ACID to even interesting things like uh, approximation queries where uh, the exact answer is not important, but fast convergence on very, very large data sets, petabytes of data uh, through approximations is important. So hopefully this gives you a picture of uh, Unified Analytics and, you know, how it is um, brought together for our customers. Yeah, so is there um, a fee for Unified Analytics? Actually, as you can see from the diagram, it's actually embedded in the uh, product itself. So essentially, we don't uh, have any additional charge. It is, um, comes out of the box and uh, just uh, makes it easy for our customers to uh, get going. Uh, if anything, um, if you see our uh, UI screen for this, it's very simple. On the left-hand side, you'll actually see that as you bring up CDW, you just turn on uh, Unified Analytics on or off. So we don't want to force our customers to go to Unified Analytics right from day one. If they have applications running, which is pretty good in CDW as Justin and uh, David outlined, but if they want these advanced capabilities for EDW, they can turn it on. And once they have turned it on from this left-hand screen, it's just a toggle switch. Then on the right-hand side, once the data warehouse is live and running, it'll basically give you a uh, indicator that 
uh, Unified Analytics is on and it's available and it's running for you. It's as simple as that. So there's no separate charge, it's built into the product. Got it, thanks. Um, let's start taking some questions from our audience. So um, reminder to those of you watching us live, pop in your questions in the comments below and you'll also be entered to win some Clutter swag. So let's see. Um, first up, we have a question from a company that has, our data resides in CDP private cloud. How can we leverage Clutter data, data warehouse in this case? Um, a kind of a hybrid implementation? Justin, yes. uh, I'll, I'll take this one. So uh, two answers. Uh, first off, the, the CDW service we've been explaining, that also exists in the, in the private cloud flavor. So it can run uh, today on OpenShift and another uh, couple of weeks, we'll, we'll be putting out one that's got a, an embedded container service. And, and that's something that you can use to sort of tack on to your existing um, CDP private cloud cluster to bring this agility, the, the isolation, all those stuff, uh, the things that we mentioned, to the private cloud-based uh, world. The, the other um, approach is we've got tools that can replicate data over from a CDP-based environment through to the CDW or CDP public cloud. And so um, in th this case, it's a bit more of the hybrid flavor that's mentioned in the question. And, and we're actually putting a lot of innovation into that to, to cover more different scenarios for Acid replication tables and, and bidirectional data movement and cloud one to cloud two movement. So we're turning this replication tool really into a, a data migration and data intelligent data movement tool that will help ultimately with getting to this hybrid and multi-cloud environment. Are you seeing a lot of customers take that path today? There, um, several have. Um, I think that there are a lot of customers are still trying to figure out exactly what their posture will be when it comes to um, private cloud versus public cloud versus hybrid. Um, typically, they're they're choosing one or the other for the moment, but all have aspirations for the most part of, of a hybrid world where they've got the workloads that make sense to run in the private cloud stays there. The workloads make sense to run in the public cloud goes there. And our whole uh, strategy and goal here is to make it sort of reduce the friction of doing that movement so you can choose where you want this to run be it for cost or performance or security reasons. And the, the tool sort of gets out of the way and makes it easy for you to do that. That makes sense, thanks. Um, so another question, um, specifically around Hive. So if you're using Hive in CDW, what will the query, what's the query execution engine? Is it Tez or something else? Yeah, actually uh, the Hive in CDW uh, basically has uh, two parts to it. Uh, the Tez is the underlying uh, orchestration, but we do have an accelerator built on top of that um, called LLAP. Uh, and basically, it's meant for very low latency uh, execution of the queries. So between TES and LLAP, uh, we are able to get uh, extreme amounts of parallelism, uh, much faster response times, a very intelligent caching, uh, the uh, how to deal with columnar uh, data sets in memory on disk, so there's a lot of optimizations built uh, in between LLAP and TES that allows uh, the uh, CDW engine to perform perform very well for Hive. So it's primarily a combination of the two, but it's really fronted with LLAP. Excellent, thanks. So time for one last question. So um, how can we move over from our current CDH5 um, inst instance to CDP? I can take that one. Uh, so we've got, um, as of now, there's there's fully supported like wizard-driven upgrade pathways from CDH5 to CDP, CDH6 to CDP, and HTTP 2 and 3 to CDP. So it's all tool-driven, um, and and we do. Uh, it, it's pretty intelligent in the sense of we'll convert the security policy rules over to the new format. The the, the metadata is converted over. So we take care of all of that stuff behind the scenes. So you really just have to sort of step through the process and, and you know, do your smoke testing once it's all done. But um, short answer is it's it's wizard driven today and a, and a pretty simple and uh, hardened process at this point. Got it. Thanks. So um, and for those of you watching, there's a in the comments you should see a blog about CDH to CDP migration to learn more. So thank you everyone for joining. And now in for our raffle winner, um, Khalifa Hashim, you have won our prize. So please email social media at cloudera.com to claim your Cloudera swag. Thank you to our presenters and thank you to everybody for joining and we'll see you next month with what's new with Cloudera. Thank you.